Welcome to St. Anne's. We are so glad you have chosen to join us. Today we celebrate the second Sunday of Advent. We light the second candle of our Advent wreath. It is called the Bethlehem candle and symbolizes faith, the faith Mary and Joseph had on their journey and our faith as we prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Our mass intention is the parishioners of St. Anne and our celebrant is Father Joe. At this time, kindly check that your cell phone is silenced. Please stand and greet those around you as we begin our celebration. So we begin with the sign of our salvation in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good evening. Good evening we welcome you as we gather as God's people this evening. Advent is a season that engages our greater awareness and draws us away from the regular and challenges us to risk making changes to our normal routine and to be led closer to the kingdom of God. Let us consider what changes we might make in our lives as we prepare the way of the Lord. In today's gospel, John the Baptist tells the people, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Calling to mind the need of repentance in our own lives, let us ask our gracious God for forgiveness.
Lord Jesus, you came to save the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you preach a message of mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you believe in the goodness of all creation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. prophet Isaiah. On that day a shoot shall sprout from the stump of Jesse, and from his roots a bud shall blossom. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, a spirit of wisdom and of understanding, a spirit of counsel and of strength, a spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and his delight shall be the fear of the Lord. Not by appearance shall he judge, nor by hearsay shall he decide. But he shall judge the poor with justice, and decide aright for the lands afflicted. He shall strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Justice shall be the band around his belt, and faithfulness be a belt upon his hips. Then the wolf shall be a guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together, with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors. Together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den, and the child lay his hand on the adder's lair. There shall be no harm or ruin on my, all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with knowledge of the Lord as water covers the sea. On that day the root of Jesse, set up as a signal for the nations, the Gentiles shall seek out, for his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, whatever was written previously was written for our instruction, that by endurance and by the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you, for the glory of God. For I say that Christ became a minister of the circumcised, to show God's truthfulness, to confirm the promises to the patriarchs, but so that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy. As it is written, therefore, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. The word of the Lord. according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sin. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good food as evidence of your repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn 
with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Good evening again. Uh, at the rectory, uh, usually at uh, about 6 p.m., we, we gather in the TV room and we watch the local news. And that's on for about a half hour. And then from 6.30 to 7 is the national news. So we're there watching all the terrible things that happened in the world that day. But at the end of the national news, just before they close, they always have a little snippet. And it's, uh, I, I think it's, a, I can call it a, a feel good snippet. Uh, they try to say, uh, tell that something nice happened in the world that day or, or the last couple of days. And last week they had a little snippet where a newborn baby was brought home for the first time and settled in his mother's lap on the sofa. And the dad brought in the dog. And he said, I want you to meet your little brother. And our ears perked up as well. That's kind of interesting. So the dog was hesitant, and yet they coaxed him to get on the couch, and finally he put his paw on the master's lap, and he just stared at the baby. The reason I, I, I got as impressed with that story is because what we heard in the first reading, Remember the first reading it says, you know, the lion is going to be with the wolf and they're going to share a meal and, and uh, all these animals that don't seem to get along at all, they're going to be friends. They don't like one another. So that's what attracted me to this story. That, uh, you know, dogs are, are, are pets, but they have to be trained. Uh, they don't usually live with human beings. So there's a change. They say, you know, look who can live together. And sometimes you read about animals that, you know, really don't have any interest in each other, that somehow they take care of one another, especially if they're wounded. So there's, there's a connection, you know. And I think the, the readings today are, are, are trying to help us to understand a, a connection of what's happening, what's happening in our world. If I was in Judea at the time and, and I saw John the Baptist come, I don't think I would rush to meet him. First of all, he's wearing camels here. You know, and his diet is wild honey and insects. I don't think we'd have a good meal together. <laughs> and the way he's talking, you know, there, there's something about the way he's talking. He's, he's kind of forcing himself on us, but yet what he is saying is attracting because we hear that all kinds of folks went out to listen to him. He had something to say. And he had some very strong words as we heard in the gospel this evening. First, he attacks the Sadducees and Pharisees and he let them have it there. But even the folks, the plain folks, 
He was telling them about their lives. And you know what's strange about it? Is that they were attracted to him. They listened to him. And all he kept saying was, you've got to change your attitude. You've got to change your mindset. You've got to stop thinking like everything is okay and think beyond. We've got to start thinking so that we realize that there is something other that's important in our lives. And that it's not all about me. Is that a good message? It isn't about us, is it? Sure, I'm here, you're there, but it's all of us. It's all of us. And that's what God comes to tell us. And he comes in the most strange ways. Who ever thought that he'd be showing up in a desert? Who ever thought that he would be fighting battles? Who ever thought that he would become a human being? Who ever thought that he would say the most important thing in your life is love. Wow. That's a change, isn't it? Because so often we hear, we're bombarded with what makes us happy, right? Did you go out Black Friday? Did you go shopping? What about Blue Monday? <laughs> now stop and think about that. It's all presented to us as we're the most important. We are important, but it's all of us who are important. And, you know, God comes to us in the strangest ways and in the strangest places. We saw another glimpse this evening as the second candle was lit, you know, it becomes a little brighter. It's the road, the road that leads to Bethlehem. It's the road that tells us the journey has begun and we got a destination. We got a place to go. And of all places, God chose Abel, Bethlehem. Oh my God. There's a line in the scriptures where it says, What good can come out of Bethlehem? And so here we are tonight. We believe that something good has really come out of Bethlehem. It's the one gift that God gave us that is so unbelievable. In fact, he attracts all of us, any of us, who want to find purpose and meaning in life. And we have a direction. And that direction calls us to change. We use the word that John uses, repent, change. And when you change, you're going to see the most beautiful gift that you can possibly think of. God bless.
Please stand. And let us pray our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God Son of God, born of the Father for all ages. God, God, light like light, true God, true God, true God. Trusting that the Spirit of the Lord is always with us, we bring our needs before God. Our response is, Dread of life, hear us. For the church, that we may repent of our sins and bear good fruit, witnessing to the world that the kingdom is at hand, we pray. Dread of life, hear us. For an end to hostilities across the world, that opposing sides may come together as neighbors in a spirit of wisdom and understanding, we pray. Bread of life, hear us. In thanksgiving for the blessing Father Gabe has been to our parish, for his safe travel, and that his gifts of compassion, joy, and kindness will continue to touch our hearts, we pray. Bread of life, hear us. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and the permanent deaconate, we pray. Lord of life, hear us. For greater awareness that the Spirit will help us recognize the many roots that have nourished and helped our faith to blossom, so that we may continue to deepen our discipleship and bear abundant fruit, we pray. Bread of life, hear us. For all who are ill, that the coming of Christ will bring healing, freedom from addiction, and, and courage to live life fully each day. We pray especially for these members of our community, Steve Brightup, Doug Burns, Susan Carey, Lee Cordemanch, Art De Cicero, Vicki Diffley, Cindy Dinette, Bill Downs, Joseph Fulicello, Esperanza Garrett, Ray Holihan, Tom Gladick, Bill Holtz, Elaine Johnson, Rusty Mon, Rusty Medlin, Ron Monkman, Jean Murphy, Nick Nicolosi, Naki Orf, Joan Tweet, Joseph Villani, Pete Weirich, we pray. Bread of life, hear us. For our beloved dead, that they may see the glory of God's mercy. We pray for Brian Goldenberg, brother of Ken Goldenberg, cousin of N.C. Liedberg. Charles Fow, Jr., brother of Barbara Johnson. Henry, Harry Glenn Stewart, Jr., Husband of Catherine, father of Natalie Kennel. Dee Dee Taylor, mother of Carla Maley, grandmother of Jack, Kathleen, and Courtney. Baradette Emerine, wife of Joe, mother of Marta, Cara, and Mary Lay. And for our mass intention, the parishioners of St. Anne's, we pray. Bread of life, hear us. As a lost led parish, let us ask for the Blessed Virgin's intercession. 
Our Lady of La Salette, reconciler of sinners. Pray for us, for our sins. God of heaven and earth, you sent your spirit to dwell with us and guide us in the ways of justice and faithfulness. Hear our prayers that we might stay rooted in your way. And we do ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This weekend's second collection is for our St. Anne's Life Team program. sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We bring grace and glory to this name. For our good and for all souls of the church. Amen. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. And we do ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exalted in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we eat this bread, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory, John, our Archbishop, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Anne and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
preaching, we dare to lift our voice in prayer. I leave you my peace I give you but not on our sins but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. my sisters and brothers may the peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit and so we offer a sign of peace to one another Sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. God, not worthy that you should enter under my word, but only say the word. Thank you. 
I would just like to uh, announce uh, this important uh, reminder that uh, the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception of the Blessed Virgin Mary will be celebrated this Thursday at 9 a.m. in the morning and 7 p.m. The Vigil Mass will be celebrated the evening prior on Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, this is a holy day of obligation, and uh, we invite you to please join us. And as is our custom, we'd like to welcome anyone that's moved into our parish family. If we have any visitors, if you'd like to please stand so we can welcome you. Yes, welcome. Nice to have you. Well, give a nice round of applause for those of Okay. Father, uh, before we um, ask Jill and Rafi up, yeah. can I make a quick announcement really quick? Sure. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're going to be having the Christmas sing-along coming up in a week from Thursday. And one of the things that we thought we would do, and this is last minute because I'm very last minute. That's kind of who I am. But um, got a great idea from some friends that we try to get everybody to send in, everybody who's going to come send in a vintage picture from Christmas past like that, right? Something along those lines. And if you can't guess who this is, I will tell you that his sister is on the left and he is on the right, and that is Father Ray and his sister Flo, all right? And the world really was that color back then in those films. So what we want to do is we want to create a slideshow with your pictures, and we're going to sing some nostalgic songs underneath that as we watch all these go by. So um, you can email me. I'm in the bulletin, on the website, on the St. Anne's website, on um, eBulldog, and uh, send me your pictures. I've already gotten several from today, so this is going to be exciting. So please send your pictures in, and we'll do that for the Christmas sing-along. Thank you, Emily, for that great idea. <laughs> great. Jill and Rafi, would you like to come up? I know that you guys are getting ready to wrap up school this semester. You got finals coming up in a week or two, and then y'all are done, so now you're excited about that. Um, we are getting ready to wrap up our semester with Life Teen also, but we got a lot packed in for the next two weeks for you guys. So Bible study this Wednesday, per usual. Um, next Wednesday, we're gonna do a just a fun distress fest. So come Wednesday night during Bible study, we're just gonna have food and games and just fun stuff for that to get you guys to relax a little bit during finals week. Um, we have life night tonight, but Rafi's going to talk about that in a minute. But the next two weeks after that, we're going to break up in a really important series, really fun series, but we're going to close the semester with a special Advent XLT here in the church on Sunday the 18th. So we hope you guys can um, do all of that with us. But uh, what's going on tonight, Rafi? You guys, hey guys. Um, nah, it's okay. So tonight's a super fun night. We're just going to have a little Christmas party. Um, so we're gonna have a fun little Italian like 
meal catered in for us. Um, photo booth, desserts, a lot of fun stuff. Um, this night was all done by the parent board, um, parents for life board. So if you see any of them, please thank them, give them a hug. Um, they, they worked really hard for it. So um, please enter through, we're gonna eat dinner at La Salette Hall. Um, if you have any cans, there's gonna be a place to put them right outside of La Salette Hall. Um, and we're just gonna have a lot of fun and it's gonna be good. Did you say a lost uh, Italian meal? I heard that too. <laughs> oh, que bueno, que bueno. Please stand. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with and may Almighty God bless us this evening with his peace, love, and joy, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace and love to serve our God and our neighbor. Please.